Hey, what's up guys? It's me, Brandon Johnson from Used Boats TV. And today I get to take you for a ride with me on a 2012 Ranker 296 Bow Rider. Let's all go. Once again, you're watching this video on my YouTube channel, which is Used Boats TV. The purpose of this channel is to make a lot of training and how-to videos, all to help enhance your boat ownership experience. So do me a favor while you're here checking this out. If I provide you any value at all, please click down below and hit that subscribe button. Let's get started. What it really means to live life golden. First thing you do when you get aboard your 296 Rinker, once it's in the water, since it's gotta be in the water to run, just come back here, start with side aft, lift up the cabinet. In here you got dual batteries with a switch. We're gonna turn this to on. If we were to stop, cove out, listen to the radio, drop anchor and have fun, switch it to combined batteries to start if it wouldn't start. Heaven forbid it won't start now, your batteries are dead. You have, a sa you have a safety backup here and here. You can apply power and ground and this will lift the engine hatch so you can get to those batteries. There's also some resets in here if something quit, quit working. Also, this boat has shore power, so when you're moored, you can plug it in on the side, come underneath here, turn that on, it'll keep your battery charged and your refrigerator going. But we're going boating, so we got it on on. From there, just come up to the helm. I'm gonna include a link in the description down below this video that explains what to do when your boat won't start. So this is a 2012, it's got very new technology. To start it, all we should have to do is turn the key. Fires right up. Okay. I've had a lot of people excited to drive, and as they drive, they have the finger on the trim up button. So first button, we got trim. This sends the, mo the out drive up, sends the out drive down. It corresponds with a gauge right here. It goes up when the drive's going up, down when the drive's going down. Okay? So. To shift it, it's real simple. Lift up on the red part of the handle, engage into gear. The Bravo 3 is a very easy to maneuver out drive. Since it's easy to maneuver, all you gotta do is hit the button when you go into gear. So forward, reverse. There's a definitive catch in forward and reverse. Throttle range is beyond that, okay? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna show you what the gauges are. We're gonna go through our buttons and switches. I'll edit it within the video the stuff corresponding with the buttons and switches working. And then we're gonna go drive the boat. Then we're gonna do some drone footage and then check out the interior and exterior condition. Let's get started. Right here, right away, we got our navigation lights. That's a red and green that's built in up front and the white. Light up on the arch for night. In the middle's off, anchor light all the way down, stopped at night. Lights are inside, they're LEDs. Docking lights are the headlights up front. Please remember it's illegal to run with those on at nighttime. Cabin lights, this has the same helm even if this were cutty cabin closed bow, which this is an open bow, so that doesn't do anything. Transom lights, if it has them, there'll be a light over on the swim platform. Accessory, God knows, sometimes at night something funky comes on. Panel lights, this is a dimmer. So when your navigation lights are on, you know, these are gonna light up. So this will make it get brighter or not as bright. Power engine hatch right here. Just wanna show you that works. Once we get the boat back on the trailer, we'll go through that engine compartment a little better. Uh, galley pump, this is for the water system. Bilge pump's automatic, you'll probably never use it, but the National Marine Manufacturer Association says all boats have to have a bilge pump button. Horn, works good. Okay, let's look at our gauges. We have a Hillbilly GPS, AKA compass, tachometer, 95.2 hours. Right over here, we got a GPS, cursor down for next page, next page, next page, cursor down. I think I hit that right, enter, there we go. 
So this is gonna show us the time, how fast we're going, our GPS coordinates, because that's very important. Right here's, that was a joke, huh? Uh, right here's a four in one gauge to declutter the dash. So we got our fuel, bolts, oil temp, engine temp, trim for the outdrive, and depth finder. Right here we got the blower. Right down here we got ship to shore radio. Right over here we got our trim tabs with our indicator switches. Right here we have our power anchor control. Right here we have our stereo system. Right over there we got some big rollers. About to get dizzy. Oh yeah, that sounds great. Where's all the bikini babes at? Hope my wife don't watch this. Right here we can plug our phone in and your wife and girlfriend's phone. There's a whole bunch of these things. Okay, it's also got tilt steering, so you can kind of set this wherever you want. I like to have it down so I can use my fat belly to hold the camera while I'm driving. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the camera from Mr. Bill here, and I'm gonna drive the boat trimmed all the way down. I'm gonna include a link in the video once again that explains how tilt and trim works. Be sure to refer to that if you have any questions. So I'm gonna run the boat full speed trim down, then I'm gonna trim up, which is bringing our out drive up, hitting the button, so we can get up on top of the water and see what our true top speed is. We're gonna see how much fun we have. Then we're gonna go put it back on the trailer. Let's get started. Okay, we're at a dead stop, as you can see. We got Billy texting his wife. It's a beautiful sunny day and I am got a fat boy suntan. All right, so shifting into gear. Once again, lift up on the red handle, engage it in gear, definitive stop. That makes it easy to maneuver. You always wanna make sure that your trim is down and your tabs are up before you take off. Let's go ahead and accelerate. This baby has a 380 horsepower, 8.2 Merc Cruiser. This old boy's trying to buzz us over here. So it gets up on top of the water extremely smooth. For a 30 foot boat, it's nice. Hopefully you can hear me a little better. So that's a nice comfortable cruise speed. 33 mile an hour, running nice and flat. Let's crank her down. So she really hadn't warmed up or anything. Let's see what her top end is here. We're at 38, 39.6 mile an hour. She's running nice and flat. 41 mile an hour. As you can see by the size of the wake we're shooting off here, we're plowing water. So let's trim up. Ready, up. That's one click, two click three click and as we come up just a couple clicks we've increased our speed by three miles an hour four five miles an hour and a 46.6 point eight 47 if this was a boat race we'd get at least six place we're jumping waves 47 let's keep going see what we can get out of her almost 48 mile an hour down a little about 48 mile an hour is what we're gonna do top speed so how did she turn power steering very smooth cross my legs like I'm sitting in church that's nice and sharp Billy's doing the robot <laughs> so you really should trim down by the way before you turn but turns good sounds good runs tight as I always say it's not hitting and missing and spitting and sputtering and popping nor falling on its face it runs like a runs like I'm running out of prison all right. Now, now we're gonna talk about the operation of trim tabs. Be right back. Okay, I always tell people, when they get a new boat that has a lot of new systems, such as power anchor, trim tabs, there's a lot to absorb. You know, tilt and trim if you've never had a boat before, period. So I always say break it down. Don't even touch your tilt and trim unless you're a trailer boater because you don't wanna drag your out drive on the ground. Don't even touch your tilt and trim to get used to running the boat with it trimmed down. Once you've done that, you get accustomed to how the boat feels, operates and maneuvers, trimmed down. Once you're used to that, then you can start playing with your tilt and trim, seeing how the boat feels to get up on top of the water. Once you're used to that, 
then play with your trim tabs. Okay, trim tabs. People overthink them. They're only there if you need them. They're not there because it's required, okay? So what these are is there's flaps on the back sides of the boat, okay? They go up and down. You control them right over here. I'm going to show you how. So let's say you had a bunch of people sitting on one side of the boat, and you're going down the Lake Cricket like this. Uh, you can just hit your buttons and level it out. So if you're turning when you go to set them, that's stupid. Don't do that. Can't even tell what you're doing. Pick something straight ahead of you before you start setting them, okay? You don't want to use them when you're running wide open. You want to use it when you find your comfortable cruise speed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the boat running about 30 miles an hour again. I'm going to pick something straight in front of me. I'm going to show you that, and then I'm going to use the tabs. And since this has indicators, we'll actually be able to see exactly where they are. Let's go. Here we go. So let's find our cruise speed here. And as you can see, our tabs are up. We're going to come up on the plane. Remember, trim down, find your cruise speed. If your tabs are down and your trim is up, that creates a boating operational oxymoron. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever to do that. Okay, so right around here is our good cruise speed of 30 miles an hour. You see those great big white condos up yonder. That's what we say here at the Ozarks up yonder. Okay, so I'm not gonna touch the steering wheel. I'm only gonna show you that they work. Okay, down. See the lights going down? Now look what happens. The boat starts running completely sideways. As you can see, and we're turning away. So I'm going to raise that back up. That's how you know the port side works. Let's straighten her back out. We're going to pick up, pick those condos straight in front of us up yonder again. Once again, not touching the wheel. Starboard side. We should be turning to the left. And sure as heck, we are hard turning hard to the left. See? See the condos? Now watch. When I turn back into the tabs, we're running almost sideways. So that's how you, how you operate trim tabs. Just like that. Now let's say because of, of a bunch of people sitting on one side of the boat, you had your tabs set just right and they all move right over here because some great big chick just did a big cannonball over here. Made a big wave. Well, then the boat's going to go really crooked. That's okay. Just stay calm. About 10 seconds. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That takes them from all the way down to all the way up. Also, when you go to dock the boat at a restaurant, your dock, your slip, whatever, put it on the trailer. Bring them all the way up. If you have one tab all the way down, one half down, it's very hard to maneuver the boat because those are actually stopping, grabbing, pulling, pushing water. Okay? When you shut the motor off, they go up on their own. Okay? So now what we're going to do is put it back on the trailer. We're going to look at a little drone footage. Then we're going to do part two. I'll include a link in the description below, which is condition of this specific Rinker 296 Power Rider. I should probably show you that the Power Anchor works too. So right here, we have our Power Anchor button. For transport purposes, the anchor is underneath the seat back here. I'm leaving it off, but you turn it on, okay? Right here is your up and down. I'm going to come up to the bow. You got her, Bill? You come up to the bow. Naturally, your anchor will be attached to this chain. Okay, go ahead and hit it, Bill. Down. Ready? That goes down. Go up. And that goes up. And that's how you work the anchor. So this boat's got a depth finder. So how do you know how long to go down? I always add a quick 10 Mississippi count to whatever the depth is. Does that make sense? You don't want to go out in 50 feet of water, that's silly. So if you're in 15, 20 feet of water, that's fine. So you're gonna do a quick 20 second because you're in 20 feet of water plus 10. And then back up about 10 feet. You'll hear, you'll feel it get nice and secure, that chain, your anchor set. All right, let's take a look at the condition of this bad boy. Let's go below the rub rail to the port side. Joe Coat's phenomenal shape and so are the graphics. I was heavily involved with the detail of this boat, getting her cleaned up, because we had we promised more to get ready that we could handle. So that being said, my grandpa always said, son, you really can't tell the condition of something until you clean it. So I know that the only flaw in this is one little bump in the rub rail right here. That's the only thing on the exterior I found. Okay. 
So that is the port side. Stop, drop down low, look at the tabs, the plug, the out drive. Propellers are in awesome shape. The very front of the Skag, probably from bumping the lift, right there, has a little bit on it, but I cleaned that drive, doesn't it look nice? Back here on the stunning, massive, molded on swim platform. Gel coat's great, blower vent covers are great. One thing I do want to tell you, these are both in great shape. Keep in mind this boat weighs over 6,000 pounds. Keep in mind this weighs like 10 ounces, okay? A lot of people want to help you and I get it, but if they want to try to pull over 6,000 pounds using this eight to 10 ounce piece, it's gonna break it. It's not broke, don't let anyone grab it, they'll break it. All right, let's stay above the rubber rail to the starboard side. No nicks, dings, scuffs, scrapes, scratches. It's really and truly kind of crazy. Let's go below, down below the water line. The strakes, the keel, the chines. Keels, strakes, strakes, chine, all in great shape. You got stainless steel docking light housings. Gel coat to the starboard side is beautiful also. If you can see yourself in it, you know it's shiny. There we go. outside let's jump inside and take a look okay here we are climbing aboard your boat let's take a look at the condition the vinyl is truly in amazing condition so you got storage underneath here storage underneath here okay this seat folds out flat that seat folds out flat also you got storage back here like so the seat backs are all in really nice shape not faded ripped cracked tore storage under here storage under here Line storage, stereo mode control, battery switches. Carpet's in great shape. Take a look at the vinyl once again, nice. slow and methodical. It's, it's awesome. Let's sit down and take a look at your bimini top. It's great too. It's also got a full enclosure and snap on covers. Trash can. Okay, so underneath the seat we got a cooler. Owner's manuals are in there. Refrigerator's here. This is my telephone. This is the nightlight. I haven't thought of a good place to put it. The anchor light plugs in on top of the arch. This thing, if you start to feel like your windlass is kind of loose, you have to tighten it up. It's like maybe a once every couple year little maintenance item you do. Only if you feel like it's got kind of slack. All right, captain seat vinyl. Great shape. It's got the flip up and down bolsters. Gunnels are awesome. There's a cover for the GPS in there. You've seen a lot of the helm. All right. This is how you make the seat not swivel so freely. Uh, this one slides it. This one makes it slide back and forth. Okay. This seat, same thing. Great shape. Same adjustments. Flip up and down bolster. All right. Latch for the door. Grab handle for your bad, scary driver. Bow filler cushion makes the bow into a bed. Got some toilet paper and some Windex. That's how you know it got real dirty. Flush out head. CD player. Place to plug your phone into it. More toilet paper. Right in here we got some CDs. An extra cord. And my favorite thing that came with this boat. The Monster Booty CD. Heck yeah. All right, right here we got the wind block door. Those shut for a cool, cold, windy, rainy day. Block the wind. Huge storage compartment in here. Didn't get it real clean under there, did they? It's my fault. And here we got our table, our snap-in covers, and our enclosure. Coming up into the bow. Bow vinyl's in great shape. Look at the top. The bottom. Built-in cup holders. That comes out as a step. And you got storage underneath these. It's all nice and tubbed, tubbed and lined. Let's take a look at that engine. Well, that's coming up. That's a ship shore radio antenna. A lot of people take it off. I like to point it the other way and use it for boat jousting. All right, let's take a look at the engine. So right in here, port side of the compartment is our batteries. That's your gear loop container right there. That's 90% of your alarms that go off. Always keep a cord of Mercury's or high performance gear loop in the boat. 
There's your fresh water tank. The antifreeze is super duper clean. Always something to look at. Oh, there's another light back there. There she is. It's got the new catalytic converter manifold things. Hope you're happy with it. I'll see you on the water. You're watching this video on my YouTube channel, which is Use Boats TV. I sell boats here at Heartland Marine. So do me a favor. If you're checking this out for information, be sure to Fuck. keep going, keep going. Throw out the Maui mats, get stuff out of the cooler, and have some good times. Oh, so stupid. I'm gonna drive the boat, the trimmed. Testing, 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 testing. What's up for snakes?